Every story begins with a great inspiration. The writer can see the story in its fullness before the first word is ever written. A good writer can see the end of the story from the beginning. The story of East Laurenburg Church of God is a great one. Come join us the next few minutes and listen to our story. Our story begins in 1943 in a small house owned by Sister Fanny Quick where a small gathering of people met together for one purpose, to worship God in the spirit of holiness. A young minister by the name of Roland Paul Fields and his wife Quessie came to the small congregation with a passion for ministry and a love for people. Under the leadership of Preacher Fields, as he was commonly referred to, the church quickly began to grow. On August 13, 1943, Brother Fields reorganized the church in East Larnberg. Brother Fields, he, he was tough now. He was tough. But he was a, a he was great. He was he was strong. He was a strong warrior in God. Sister Rachel Horn, Sister Lisey Creech, and Sister Martha Salmon became the first three charter members of the newly organized Church of God. After a short time, the congregation moved to the house of Ralph Danford, where services were held until the church could move forward with construction of a sanctuary. In this same year, property was purchased to build a church. Following a powerful tent meeting in the East Laurenburg community, hosted by the church with evangelist Reverend A.V. Childers, the church added many members to its already growing congregation. The church worked diligently to erect a structure on the land that was previously purchased. A building was quickly built by the men of the church that became lovingly known as the chicken coop. I can tell you that I was born in a little white house behind the church. And I, I pastored by the fields when he first came to our church. We didn't have a church. They live in a little, a brilliant house that behind where our church is now, and uh, it was called the Chicken Cup. They had service on the front porch, and uh, there was three ladies when they first started in the church, and they they literally had church on the front porch. And uh, so Brother Fields lived in kind of the back part of the house and the front part of the house, I guess they use it as a kitchen. And they, the women would gather there and make hamburgers, apple, apple turnovers, and things that they could sell in the, the mills to help raise money to build a church. And that's how our church got started, was through uh, William workers and the uh, ladies working in, in Brother Fields' little house out there. and. Go and, and some of them would take it to the mills and go in different places and delivery. And, and it, it was a real, real success. And so that's how our church got started. Soon after this building was complete, construction began on the existing sanctuary. Brother Pee Wee Tyson drew the blueprints, dug out the footings, built the blocks, and laid the foundation for our current sanctuary. Some of the members of the church, they'd work all day and come down here and uh, lay brick to try to get the church built. After completion of the basement, the worship services were conducted in the basement of the church. The church now had a proper place to worship and a parsonage for the pastor and his family. The church continued to grow in these early years while the men of the church finished construction to the top floor of the sanctuary. In 1950, Brother Fields moved to Waitsboro, North Carolina to pastor the local congregation. In the years following, several pastors would come to the church and lead the congregation. Reverend E. L. Newton was assigned to the church in 1950. Under his leadership, the interior of the church was completed, and the church continued to grow financially and spiritually. In 1952, Reverend W. C. Lee came to pastor the church for six years. It was during this ministry that the parsonage was built on the east side of the church and the chicken coop was converted to the church fellowship hall. In the next six years, the church would see three more pastors. Reverend G.C. Timberman, Reverend E.L. Newton was assigned to this church a second time, and Reverend E.H. Miles. In 1964, Brother Fields and his family returned to the East Laurenburg Church of God, where he and his wife faithfully served until their death. Brother Fields was a great man. 
he was really a pastor. He, if he was sick, he's at your door. He's coming to visit you. And he loved people. He loved the children. And he let it be known that he did. That great big old smile he had. And his wife was so precious. She had one of the most pretty smiles I've ever seen in my life. And so humble. And they were just such wonderful people. During these years, the Lord blessed the church in many ways. The Holy Spirit would move in such a powerful display as the anointing would flow from the first song of each service. The music ministry of the church has always been a pivotal part of our story. We used to have a band that was very large and it impacted even the state uh, overseer and uh, our, our, when we had our, our, our camp meetings, you know, every year. Uh, they would ask us to go up to Charlotte and, uh, and uh, to play. Oh my goodness, yes, the, the band. Paul Hyatt uh, did such a tremendous job. I actually played the saxophone in this band. band. I did for a number of years, played a tenor sax. Uh, Brother Guilford Clark's son, Gil, uh, taught me how to play and read music. Uh, and transpose while I was reading it and play. And if that's not a mouthful, that was a feat within itself. I mean, I can, I barely can read English. Uh, here I am, was reading music and don't, I don't have a musical bone in my body, but I played in that choir, in the band. We would travel uh, for the state for senior adult camp meeting with that band. And we would take a whole bus load and go to Charlotte or somewhere and just play and play and play. Special services throughout the year brought a sense of community to the church. Harvest Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Community Easter revivals were all an opportunity for the community to come worship together. But there are no services as special as homecomings. Homecomings, wow. <laughs> Dinner on the ground. Uh, I'm pointing, looking at the pulpit to the left, there was an old sycamore tree out there. And that's where they had homecoming. People whom you had never seen before, they'd stop along beside the road. Uh, they'd see the table spread out uh, every which way, everywhere you could put a table, there were tables of food. And people would just stop along the road and come and join us to eat. <laughs> well, Mother started preparing for weeks ahead of time. Cook, cooking cakes and pies and collards and beans and I hated to see it come because I had to come up real early in Judy and we'd all have her cook and then have all those dishes to wash afterwards but the food it was worth it the food was great and of course we always had the worship service after that. In 1998 a young man full of ambition and the Holy Spirit was officially appointed as the pastor of East Larnberg. Back in the early 90s, um, I started the MIP program. I, I went to Brother Fields one day. I said, Brother Fields, I really feel like God is calling me into the ministry. And he said, and I quote, he said, well, Bo, I've been waiting on you. Well, you know, Jeff was an assistant pastor um, for Daddy and his I reckon from around his early 70s until, yeah. until, you know, he retired. I drove him to Charlotte one day to a uh, some kind of board meeting, uh, and I never rode with him anywhere. Uh, I, I was thinking either I'm a control freak, I'm going to be in control of this car, or I'm scared to ride with him, so I'll let you figure that part out. I'd take his keys. We drove to Charlotte. We got there. And when we were pulling up in the parking lot, he said, uh, I'm going to let the state overseer know that I'm ready to retire. I almost had a heart attack. I'm like, what does that have to do with me? What, what, why are you telling me this? And I knew in the back of my mind what was going down. So we went in to see uh, W.P. Atkinson, uh, and, and he sat down and talked to him. And the first thing he said to the overseer, and he pointed his finger at him, and said, you see this man sitting right here with me? 
He's going to be the next pastor of East Lomberg Church of God. And the overseer quickly said, now, wait just a minute, uh, Brother Phil. We'll, we'll get to that. Let's talk about what you came here for. And he told him that he was ready to retire. What was really mind-boggling about that was Brother Fields had not shared that with the church, the Church of Pastors Council that he worked so closely with. Nobody knew that. And I'm thinking, dear God, what am I supposed to do with this information? Well, I didn't say anything to anybody other than my wife and really started praying and fasting. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, the announcement came. Uh, Brother Fields retired. The church voted. We became the pastor. Uh, didn't know what I was doing. Had no clue. Had no idea. But I had zeal. I had a heart for it. And I always said, God, if I don't try, I won't ever know. Brother Jeff, when he took the church, I saw Brother Jeff as little David come into slay giants. And there have been giants. There have been giants in the church. There's been giants in, in our personal life. There's giants in our personal homes. There's giants. And I saw Brother Jeff as little David to come slay the giants, which he did. Under the leadership of Brother Jeff McGirt and his wife Barbara, the church would expand our facilities to what we have today. He would lead the church in building and expanding the Lighthouse Children's Ministry building for the purpose of training the next generation, as well as expanding the RP and Quessy Fields Fellowship Hall. Brother Jeff also led a church-wide renovation that updated the church sanctuary. He, along with his wife, organized many ministries that are still in operation today in our church. After 26 years of faithful ministry, Dr. Jeff McGirt and his family felt the call of the Lord leading them to a new work in Christian education at Lee University, the premier institution of the Church of God. We actually, I always said, and I said this, the last statement I made from that pulpit October 19th, 2014, was I came empty and I left full. Church events are always exciting, but it is the people that define the church body. One of my fondest memories was Brother Jess Grace. He was a great big man. He was a hair lip man, and they said that he got saved, that he used to be an alcoholic, and when he got saved, he got saved, and he gave his heart to God. And Brother Grace would always stand up and testify. He would take his coat off, and he would throw it up in the air, and he would ring it around and around, and he would say, I want to run this race with love in my heart. Along with great leadership, our greatest strength as a church is our Christ-like love and genuine care for all people. A church has a lot of love and a lot of caring, and it makes it just feel like a place of safety. This church was known for loving people. We used to have visitors come in and, and during a Sunday night service or Sunday morning and say that they felt so much love in this church. And it's true. Uh, that's not something that you find in other places. This church would love people that they did not know uh, consistently. I think the people here uh, are truly a pillar of the community. For Laurenburg, you know, the state. And I, and I do know, I mean, I miss this church. And I've been away since 71. We're the best known for the legacy of love, which is the greatest gift of all, because many come in this church, and this is the testimony. I've had many to tell me on outside this church that I felt so much love in this church when I walked in. They cared for others, and we have to care for other people, not just the people that are inside of these four walls of this church, not just its constituency, but genuinely care for other people. And so that's a legacy that this church has, and it has that in the community because we spent um, 26 years of our life here. Uh, my kids grew up in this church. This was the only church they ever knew. Uh, I was married in this church. I buried my parents.
and everybody loved. Everybody helped. When I needed the love the most, people were there. And you don't forget that. You move off, you go to other places and do other things and life goes on, but you remember that people cared. I remember the church and I appreciate so much and can never say how thankful I am for the God up to the age. They continued to look after my mother and daddy, stood by them and thick and thin when they weren't able to perform like they had in the past. They were still there. We children were concerned because we knew they weren't up to par. And the church called us in and told us to keep our mouth shut, that they would look after him and her in every way they could. I will never forget that. And the reason they said they were going to do that is because they had given their best years their life to this church. In December of 2014, another young man and his family came to serve the people of East Laurenburg. Reverend Brett Davis and his wife Lauren were appointed as lead pastors. I'm who God called and chose to use at a strategic time in the history of this church to take it from one place to another level. And now, Brother Davis can take it right on where it's never been before. I told Brother Davis, I said, Brother Jeff broke up the fallow ground. He done the plowing. He done some of the hard labor. I said, and Brother Davis, the Lord sent you here to sow the seed. And he's sowing the seed now. And the seed is the word of God. The heart is the soil. And, and people are coming because Brother Davis is sowing the seed. He's feeding them. But yet they're starting to come in and they're getting where they can't find seeds. The story of East Larnberg is one that has been told for generations and will continue to be told for generations to come. The last chapter of our story has yet to be written. And as we look forward to what the next chapter holds, let us walk boldly in our future with holy anticipation. This year, the church celebrates its 75th year as an organized Church of God in Larnberg, North Carolina. The future of East Larnberg, I think, is probably brighter than ever. I don't, I don't, I don't think this church has a limit. This church has been here for a long time, and I believe it will be here until the Lord returns. A strong testimony to a church that remains steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. 75 years ago, this church began in a small home from the house that moved to the chicken coop out back of the property. From the chicken coop, we moved into the basement. From the basement, we moved into the current sanctuary that we're sitting in now. Brother Jeff McGurk came along and he renovated all the property and expanded all of the property that we see now. And now, after 75 years of legacy, this church is as strong today as it has ever been before. And the future is as bright now as it has ever been in our church's history. And we look forward with anticipation all that God has for us. We're excited about where we are. We're excited about where we've been. But we're anticipating where we're going.